for our first fight of the weekend, Andy, over in Texas, the Dickies Arena in Fort Worth. They look like they were having a great time over there, Virgil Ortiz Jr., knocking out Maurice Hocker in the seventh round. The vacant WBO international welterweight title was on the line, which is a bit of a bullshit title, let's be honest, but it might get Ortiz closer to that sort of world title level. We're both high on him, big fans of Virgil Ortiz. He got touched up at times a little bit by Maurice Hooker's long levers, but that's going to happen. Whenever you move up to this level, as Ortiz has done, against the better fighters like Hooker, you're going to get touched up a little bit. I thought he did a good job. He showed a lot of poise, a lot of power. He wasn't afraid to take a few shots, and he got rid of Mo. What happened at the end, Andy? I thought I wasn't listening to the yeah. commentary. It was a bit of a bit of a strange ending, really. Was it a body shot? Was it shot to the elbow? They were trying to excuse it when I when I turned the sound up. What happened? What happened here? It, well, I don't know really what really happened. He, he claimed it was his hand, I think, but then I think if you look at the shot, it landed around about the elbow. So I don't know if he's mm. maybe dislocated the elbow or... Maybe something's popped out in the shoulder or something like that, but it was in a hell of a lot of pain, at least. And you say, it, I mean, it was, it was a great fight. Well, it was a good, really good fight, actually. Hooker really tried to do his best, put it on him in that as well. But um, the only criticism I can say about Ortiz, I just thought he was slightly over eager to try and push the stoppage. He was, he was obviously he was at it all night. He was really pressing, really laying up those shots and stuff. You know, Twenty-two, man. He's he's only going to get better. You know, the next two, two, three years. That once he gets really filled out and really kind of grown up and stuff, he's going to be an absolute beast. Um, but I just thought it, sometimes last I just thought he could have stepped off a wee bit in that as well. I thought he'd get caught sometimes with some curly shots, marked up a wee bit in that as well. But uh, as you say, you know, it was a it was a step up in class for him. Um it done really well. Um suppose I mean <laughs> the call out of Crawford and that well, I, I applaud it. If he's gonna if it's gonna happen and he's gonna take it next that I'm down for it, I'll watch it and stuff. But I just think it's just a, a fraction too soon for him, I think, at this point. Maybe I don't know, maybe get him in with well, again obviously we've got the situation with the promotional side and stuff like that, you know, different camps, different yeah. TV networks and stuff like that. So I, I I don't know what's going to be the best options for him here, but I don't know, maybe with Eddie and that he can maybe get a maybe a an Olsen off type fighter, maybe Sean Porter, maybe. Um, I don't know if he can, can maybe bounce around. Um, Mikey Garcia, possibly. I think is Garcia no aligned with the zone at the minute. Got Garcia, I think, is a free agent, so he's is pretty it? much fair game. But I, I don't know if they would make that. You ideally, it'd be someone like a, a Ugas. But you mentioned Porter there. These are PBC guys. I really can't yeah. see them doing business with the PBC. True. True. But um, as I say, it's, it's fights like these that you want to see from from progress to get ready for Crawford and Spence and stuff. Um, yeah, but everything's looking absolutely tremendous and stuff. I mean, I was watching a bit of Jerome Ennis and stuff earlier on there. Um, obviously, too soon for that fight to happen, obviously, at this point. And that, but can you imagine those two when they, in a couple of years' time, if they've got belts and stuff? I mean, Ennis is, is, is huge for that. Well, he's a tall welterweight. And as he says, Ortiz is only going to fill out and get stronger and stuff. And so is Ennis. He's, he's a switch hitter as well. And he's, well, I think he's predominant a southpaw, but he can switch hit, good power. Um, yeah, I would love to see that fight. That, but obviously, again, we see but Ortiz needs step up fights and stuff. So, again, if 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 the promotional situation and the TV side was was an issue, or you know, we could we could have to factor that in. I think there's there's good fights that happen for him. Um, I don't know. Maybe always want to come. In, maybe David Avanesi maybe got a call. For, you know, for a potential fight. You know, it's a big opportunity for him as well. Maybe not a step up as such for for Ortiz, but um, it's certainly a top ranked contender at least. Um, I think Danny Garcia's talking about going up to 154, so, you know, we can take that fight out of the equation. So, yeah, I mean, again, we just need to break things down in regards to these, these opponents and stuff, but very impressive last night. You know, he says he, he worked the body, jabbed well, hooked well, took his, took his shots and that as well. So, but I, I just want to see him, you know, I like to see him kind of just take a step back from time to time and just kind of, you know, just didn't be all balls to the wall. I just want to see him kind of like just tidy it up a bit, just a wee bit. But as I say, 22, I mean, there's not really much to complain about at this point. He's he's clearly heading on the right the right road. Yeah, Andy ticking all the boxes there, Ozzy, on my list. Um, you can mention Avanesian if you please, but it was Jerron mm. Ennis was the one I had written down. I'm looking forward to Ennis fighting on the 10th of April against Sergei Lipinets. I think that's a really good fight. Obviously, Ennis' yeah. fight with Van Heerden didn't really tell us too much, but I like the look of this Ennis. I think he's a big puncher. I think he's exciting. He's come forward. Just imagine salivating over a future fight between him and Virgil Ortiz Jr. I think Ennis is going to go all the way to pay-per-view star. Then again, Ozzy, I was the person who predicted Broner to sit in the Mayweather throne, so maybe I've just given Ennis the curse, but could you imagine Ortiz against Ennis down the line? So it's a brilliant prospect. Definitely down the line. I was going to say next. I don't think there's any chance of that no, happening. No. Next. Um, I did think it was interesting that, I mean, Oscar De La Hoya says a lot of shit. I mean, he says he'd fight Gennady Golovkin um, now, which is obviously never going to happen. And I honestly don't believe that if an opportunity came for 
uh, for him to, for Ortiz to box Terence Crawford, that fight would happen. Um, I think that's just a step too far at the moment. Um, I love the way he's being matched, and I thought he did a great job on Hooker last night. And Hooker showed, you know, like, what what a tough man he is because he took some big shots in there, and he didn't go, you know, he didn't go without trying either, you know, like just just curl up and you know go into a bit of a shell. Um, I love the way he just flipped off the fans at the end because he thought, well, fuck you if you're going to boo me and I'll just give you a bit of abuse myself. Uh, nothing against that whatsoever. Um, I think it, opponents going forward, it's, I'm just looking at the rankings and it's difficult. Me personally, I don't see them going for Crawford, Spence, Porter or Garcia. Uh, and that's Mikey or Danny Garcia. I just think it's more of the difficult fights to make, uh, particularly, you know, the PBC guys. So I think Avanesian is definitely, you know, a worthwhile con uh, terms of a name in the form of his life. Uh, looking at names, maybe Jesse Vargas, someone like that. Um, dare I say, Kel Brook. You know, Kel's all about the cash. Will Kel, you know, get down to 147 for a big payday to go out to America again? I don't think that, you know, for where... Um, for where Ortiz is at in his career, I don't think Kel Brook is, a, you know, is a, a disrespectful or opponent, or certainly a step below Maurice Hooker. Um, and then, as you say, Lipinets was one that I thought would be a great test as well. Or Adrian Broner, you know, Broner again follows the money. Um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I certainly don't think Broner, you know, like would, would test him. Oz, 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 stop! My <laughs> erection can only get so hard. <laughs> but, no, but, yeah, Roger, big... Michael McKinson's ranked six, six with WBO, and I think he's like like a point or sorry, a position higher than what Hooker was last. There's night. the erection coming straight back down again with Michael McKinson. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but no, but that's um, but that's what's it called? I mean, like I say, Broner. That's more from a name perspective, you know, rather than someone who is going to really, you know, give him that test because I think you've got that, you know, somewhat elite bracket and I put Porter on the fringe of that, you know, that bracket as well because he's shown he can more than hold his own and then you've got that bracket which you would consider Ortiz is in already, the likes of Brooke, Avanessian, probably above those two guys as well. So unless they are going to chuck him in with the likes of, you know, a, a Porter, Spence, uh, Danny Garcia, Crawf uh, Terence Crawford... It's going to be interesting to see, you know, who they do match him with next. I mean, as I say, Oscar De La Hoya likes to talk, to, to talk the talk. Um, let's see if he's going to walk the walk. And ultimately, will be, you know, he's got the somewhat golden ticket. So he's going to be in a position to make offers there. And we'll see who, you know, who he's going to look to target as a next fight. As I say, I don't believe it's going to be one of the big boys. So we'll wait and see. I mean, is that uh, is that Kabalowskis? Assigned to top anybody. Rank. Top rank, uh, I'm sure. Mm, right. So see, again, see, see. I've, I've got an issue with the Brook fight, obviously, because obviously, if you look at the way he got handled off, off Crawford and that, and he's, he's, he's dead at 147 now, and it looks like his chin resistance isn't great either. I mean, to, to me, at least, that isn't a step up for Ortiz. No, at this point, maybe three, four years ago, when Brook was still something at 147. No, no for me, no, 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 no. What about Josecito Lopez? Which he always gives it a go. Him, well, I thought he was fighting Terence Crawford. But his name was mentioned. Surely they're not going to make that, are they? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lopez mm -hmm. must be, what, a, what, mid, what, late 30s now? Mid. Mid to late 30s, eh? But Andy said it again. Um, Yelusinov, he's not a massive name, but like Yelusinov is in cert certainly in a bracket of, the, you know, like he's 10 and 0, he's just dispatching Dongo, who has proved to be, you know, a bit of a, a complete waste of space. Um, there's talk of you loosening up Avanessian. Um, I, I like, you know, a big fan of Avanessian, but why not just put him on the blanket and then go in for um, you loosening off against Ortiz Jr.? There's no promotional problems, you know. Matchroom US and Golden Boy are both with the uh, zone, so you've got no issues there. Um, I think that's certainly a doable fight as well, particularly from Hearn's perspective, because I think he's limited on what he can do with you loosening off. I think he's a bit stuck on what he can do. He's he's in a you know a, doesn't really sell um, in a bit of a who needs him bracket. I think he's been slow a slow start to his pro career. I think he's certainly improving, but you know given how high you know how good he was as an amateur, I don't think he transitioned into the pro straight away. 
So it's going to be interesting. We'll certainly wait and see. Um, I, I mean, another name I'll throw into that bracket is Josh Taylor. When he cleans up at 140, he's going to be joining the 147 guys. And I think, again, that is another brilliant fight down the line. Uh, Ortiz against Taylor. Something to look forward to. Joe Kennedy there saying Josecito Lopez will be Crawford's first fight with the PBC. I had heard his name mentioned, but I don't know. Hopefully they can get that out of the way and Terence can move on to bigger and better things. Uh, Matty, a couple of stylistic pointers I noticed last night. Hooker seemed to be slapping quite a lot with the right hand. Maybe this is something he's always done, but the jab at times could have been a bit more forceful, trying to keep Ortiz at bay, but it had a bit of a Jose Ramirez vibe throughout. I thought that Ortiz's style was quite interesting, Matty. A lot of early Miguel Cotto going on, hands quite high almost swaggering into range and I thought early Cotto was a lot like Edwin Rosario so perhaps you can have Rosario Cotto onto Ortiz I've just created a bit of a an imaginary lineage here in my head but I thought that Ortiz's style is really maturing nicely he really does have an exceptional style and he um he can switch it up a bit you you, you see him kind of leave behind that guard move his head a bit more uh, work behind the jab work underneath his opponent's jab uh, he's, he's, he's a talented fighter um I'd like to think that if he keeps developing at this rate, that you know maybe we we talk about his uh, his style of working inside, you know maybe more in in the vein of someone like Duran than someone so uh, you know not as dur as you know uh, fragile as Cotto, um, because I'd hate to see that happen with this kid, man. Because uh, yeah, Cotto was a beast until it was like, oh yeah, yeah, you you can hurt him pretty bad. Um, for me, uh, I uh, with Hooker, he just he he seemed like he was very very concerned to set his feet more often than not because whenever he did he got clocked. Um, fair enough. He pretty much knew he had to he was going to have to box and move or get knocked out, and that's why he slapped. He did land a few good right hands uh, over the top when uh, uh, Ortiz was leaned down, but other than that, um, you know, he marked him up a bit. But it, it was really just an all Ortiz fight. I was really pissed off though because. I bet on Ortiz to win by knockout in rounds one through six. So that was a good 30 seconds of fuck Matt right up the ass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, looking looking ahead, um, the fight, you know, I know it's hard to make these fights uh, but with all the sanctioning issues, different promotional bodies. But, man, I would like to see him against Mean Machine. I think that'd be a great fucking fight, actually. And I, I think that's a good stepping stone right there. And it's it's TV friendly. Um, so, yeah I, uh, yeah, I think it's probably next to impossible to make, but I'd be all about watching Ortiz and Mean Machine go at it. Just before we move on, Matty, to the other cards, anything from the undercard that excited you? I really enjoyed uh, watching the female uh, minimum weight contest uh, with Sinisa Estrada. She was... Uh, She's really a tremendous talent. She throws some hard punches. She sets herself. Uh, she can switch it up. She's been training since she was, you know, eight years old. Sergio Mora, I remember her when she was in the gym as a young child. And um, my my only thing to say from this is, once again, you know, women's boxing. Yeah, there are a lot of bad fights. I absolutely agree. But that said, um, this gal's been knocking. Uh, knocking her opponents out more often than not, even though this went to a decision. And if you would give her three 12 minute rounds instead of, uh, or 12 three minute rounds instead of 10 two minute rounds, I guarantee she would have gotten the stoppage. So uh, just take this chance to uh, be an advocate for uh, 12 round uh, women's boxing set on the same uh, championship uh, outline as men's fights. Uh, you know, on the Ortiz fight, I was uh, I was impressed with H Hooker. Like, I didn't think he would do as well as he did. Um, I'm not sure whether that was based on the, the Ramirez fight, but it, it, you know, I thought he did. Uh, I thought he did well. Uh, a bit sad to see the the crowd booing him at the end, but I guess yeah. fighting in Ortiz's uh, you know home state that was to be given. Uh, but Ortiz did really well. Um, and I think in terms of <clears throat> where he goes from here, um, he's with Golden Boy, right? So that's going to be already be problematic because. If Oscar tries to play politics, then, um, you know, God knows where it will end or whether he'll end up getting guided in a, in a bad way that sort of benefits Golden Boy more than it benefits him. Um, I don't really see them doing that because they haven't really got anyone else. But it, 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 it's boxing, so I wouldn't rule it out. Um, Kavilouskis would be a great fight. You know, he, Kavilouskis, if I remember correctly, likes to box at range, but he can bang a bit as well. So yeah. that would, uh, it would make it a bit exciting. Um, but I, I reckon... Um, I can't remember who said it. It might have been Aussie, but it's more likely to be someone Eddie can serve up. But but really realistically, from from Eddie's sort of roster, who's that going to be? 
and uh, you know, as you mentioned, the uh, McKinsey who's fighting Congo. So the winner of that fight, um, I think, could be a potential uh, offering there. And I think Congo obviously would make the more exciting fight out of those two. Um, but other than that, um, I'm not really sure where he can go. But I think it's good for him, to be honest with you, because while all the rest of the welterweights sort of argue and refuse to fight each other, it gives him the chance to refine his craft and uh, potentially emerges as uh, you know one of the one of the names who will end up fighting everybody and, and do good stuff. I thought the fight last night was actually pretty good too. I thought Maurice Hooker, uh, you know, maybe not quite was holding his own, but I mean, he was there. He was fighting a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. The guests in the basement are are uh, part of the reason why I can't, you know, find time to squirm away. But um, we all need a gimp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But um, uh, you know, on the fight, I mean, I, I I didn't. I just jumped on, so I didn't hear everybody's thoughts on it. But um, you know, I thought Maurice Hooker was in there to fight. He he was fighting. Um, you know, it, it's kind of strange watching a guy stop whenever they hurt their hand. Um, but I, I'm sure he did because of the way that he reacted immediately whenever whenever he he landed that punch. That that um, you see guys do that quite often where they where they land a punch in a bad way or a bad spot or what have you, and they immediately turn like he did just because it's a, I guess it's a natural reaction just to kind of turn and and cover your you know cover your arm up, cover your hand up, what have you. Um, you know, I, I think it was smart of him not to carry on and fight, try to fight one-handed. Uh, I know a lot of people probably don't agree with that, but um, a one-handed Maurice Hooker is not going to fight Virgil Ortiz off. He needed everything in his arsenal to last as long as he did. And um, it was fun while it lasted. It, it was fun while it lasted. Uh, I was hoping that it would be a little bit more competitive than it was, um, but I thought Virgil Ortiz – uh, looked fairly sharp for, for what it was. I mean, he was facing the top guy. Uh, Maurice Hooker is definitely a good fighter, um, and he can punch a little bit. Virgil Ortiz ate his punches pretty clean. I haven't seen Virgil Ortiz look that just damn nasty. He looked nasty last night. Uh, all his punches were hard. Uh, he looked like he was, you know, just going in to destroy, and that's exactly kind of what happened. Um, I think rounds three and four, Maurice Hooker started kind of coming on. A little bit. Uh, I think the fourth round I gave to Hooker, uh, but I can't remember. Maybe it was close. Maybe it wasn't. I just felt like Hooker was starting to kind of get into the fight, and then the fifth round it started turning around again back to uh, back to uh, Virgil Ortiz. But um, uh, you know, I wasn't really paying attention trying to score the fight because it was a really good show. You know, that's two weeks in a row where, where the main events have been pretty good stuff. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm. Like I said, I wish it would have gone longer. I thought that Hooker would give Ortiz a little bit more trouble. Um, the only thing that I didn't like about Ortiz was how, you know, it, what he did last night worked. Going in and trying to be a body puncher and and going in with force, it, it definitely worked. Um, but I don't see the kid who was real patient uh, and seemed to try to use his boxing skills a little bit more. Maybe he just knew that wouldn't work, but... You know, um, I, I thought it was overall great, great performance by him. A good fight between the two of them. Uh, I think he's just a little bit too much for Hooker last night, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll get to see Hooker back again because I think he's always a fun watch.